everybody, Justin Weber, Amazon Sound, uh, in my office for an impromptu video session about my skinny corn scholars. Uh, several weeks ago, I sat down and went through all the parts that went into the speaker, and I wanted to show you how it turned out. So, what we have here is the Fatal super huge cast aluminum uh, one inch tweeter lens horn, if you will. Uh, throws a huge, huge sound stage mounted to the Eminence, uh, what is it, the Eminence uh, Selenium 220 Ti with a polymide driver made by Dayton many years ago. So it's, this, it's the uh, Selenium 220 Ti with a polymide driver. Dayton, uh, uh, Dayton made it uh, under license under Selenium, which then became a JBL product. It's a fantastically good driver, but any good one inch compression driver would work. BNC DE10 for 50 bucks each. Super, super, super awesome uh, use for this. Then you have the Fatal LTH 142 1.4 inch driver, 1.4 inch horn. Super awesome. You guys can't see it. I think I walked you through it, but I dynamatted the horn and then I take a rubberized paint and I cover, I, I paint the back of the horn so it looks black. No one can tell really unless they're really looking at it, but it was dynamatted. And it actually makes it less resonant. By making it less resonant, there's less distortion. It has greater clarity. Uh, the weapon of choice for the mid-range is the Radian 745 Neo. It's super light, it's super awesome, crosses at 500 hertz, can be used as a two-way. This could have been a two-way speaker, only this tall. Um, the reason why the Radiant is such a great choice is it just, you know, we're using it here, crossing it at 500 hertz, going all the way up to 5600 hertz, and then the tweeter takes over. And this tweeter horn, so this mid horn can go 500 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz, no problem. This tweeter lens can go, I think, 1200 hertz to infinity, 1200 hertz to about 22 kilohertz. So we're using really wide band drivers rather narrowly to keep the distortion low and to keep them really musical. So the um, reason why I didn't go with the Fatal driver, the uh, HF140, it's a fantastically good driver. It's about the same money. I think these are 300 bucks each, the Fatal's 260. Um, Fatal, though, won't sell you a replacement diaphragm. So any compression driver, if you blow apart, you're blowing the diaphragm. I've never blown a diaphragm in 15 years, but it's a theoretical possibility. And I'd like to be able just to buy a replacement diaphragm. Fatal will sell you a whole driver. They won't sell you a $50 diaphragm. Radian will sell you a diaphragm. They win. They're also American made. The woofer is the Eminence uh, 12 LFA, super overbuilt, goes really, really low. So as I said, we could have stopped here and made it a two-way, and I've done that before and really loved the results. But by giving me the, by utilizing the extra volume and getting the tweeter up there, uh, I had enough space to really port this and have it dig really, really, really low. So this is a low 30 hertz speaker. It's 94 dB efficient, so it's very tube amp friendly. Uh, things that we do when we build it, so I call this my back girder plate. So we cut three uh, pieces of wood for each speaker. We do a grill, which we have right here. We do the back girder plate, and then we do the front baffle right here. Now, as a hobbyist, things that you can do is that you can just face mount the horns. They won't be recessed, but they'll look beautiful nonetheless. Always do your front baffles in black, it hides makes the whole speaker look more cohesive. Um, as you see in this design, we were trying to get the biggest horn <laughs> we could in the smallest cabinet. The reason why the front and our front baffle and our back girder plate are mortised into place. So they're, they're dated, excuse me, dadoed into place. So we actually carve a channel out into our plywood. And so when the back girder plate goes into place, it can't move and distort, generate any distortion. So when we put our back panel back on, I always like having a back panel that's removable, that's going to service the speaker very easily. If you see all of these thread certs, secure the whole speaker and it's a great choice.
Uh, I think we have 14 thread certs here. They're all quarter 20. I use McMaster car. Uh, they're black oxide quarter 20s. You can get quarter 20 thread certs at Home Depot, and you can get quarter 20 bolts really inexpensively at Home Depot, inch and a half. And it'll keep it really stable. The L bracket you see right here, so even though this driver is super light and that bracket is not needed per se, I have a bracket there that uh, transfers all the weight of this driver into this brace. The bracket is from Bob Kreitz or Kreitz Speakers, Michael Kreitz the son, he still owns and operates. And it's a great resource for woofers and brackets like this or, or DIY kits even. So the point of the bracket is to strengthen the cabinet laterally. This is giving us a lot of strength. We use the L bracket to transfer the weight. We have our adjustable crossover from ALK that we've talked about previously. All of my wiring people ask about is silver plated Teflon. Uh, some people really love that as an idea. Others don't. Uh, another great choice would be uh, cotton insulated uh, wire. You can get that from uh, Jupiter condenser. So this is our speaker. One of the things to kind of take note of is we don't use drywall screws. We don't use wood screws. We don't use any screws at all. We use fasteners, so bolts and nuts. Everything here, these are all recessed, uh, recessed bolts. All came from McMaster car. Um, screws, when you are a hobbyist and you undo and redo and test and try, uh, loses their attention. There's ways to kind of fix that, but one of the easiest things to do, best ideas to do, is to literally just use nuts and bolts. I spent about $200 on nuts and bolts on a speaker. Um, I think though that it, it makes it more serviceable and more professional. Um, one of the other things we do is Parts Express has neodymium magnets. So we embed neo neodymium magnets into our front baffle. Some people will veneer over the magnets once they're embedded so they're completely hidden. We just paint them black. Um, it, blends in with the baffle, no one's ever the wiser. Uh, another little trick that we do, so we use these binding post plates we get from Parts Express, it's a Parts Express part with their binding posts, they're keyed in, and you really, really uh, can't over tighten these very easily. They won't rotate, they're just a fantastic unit. Our holes here, I believe are 5 16 so they give a little bit of wiggle, because when you're putting in this many fasteners, Something's always a little miskeyed and you want to really put the bolts in by hand and then tighten them down. Uh, one of the things you can see on our back panel is we take an inch and a half or two inch hole saw, cut the holes so the binding posts go through. As you see, we've soldered to them. And then I put a strain relief. So even if this fell over, it won't fracture my solder joint. It'll pull on the strain relief to protect itself. Uh, these are just some of the choices we've done. Um, this is a really big really fast speaker. Where a normal Cornwall, I think is an exaggerated, low-fee kind of bass in general terms, this bass is much faster and articulate. And you have huge horns. So if you have a room that's 10 by 10 all the way up to about 30 by 20, this would be a better choice than a normal Cornwall, in my opinion, much like a Forte is a better choice for normal sized rooms until you get to really big rooms. Really big rooms, the Cornwall's gonna win, but in smaller, more modest rooms, the Forte is a better choice. Just like this, you know, smaller woofer, faster woofer, more articulate, and packing the biggest horn you can. So one of the things I always tell people, just like I could tell you with tube amps, that bigger output transformers matter most, big horns throw big sound. And one of the things to think about when we buy you know, horn-loaded systems or build them is that we want big sound, immediacy. We want it to feel like it's a caged gorilla, wild as fuck, wild as F. Uh, and yet, talk table manners. It, it won't rip our ear apart. It's not gonna sound distorted and angry. It's gonna show you that it has all this veracity and physicality to the music, and yet, is tactile and agile and can be intimate. And I think that that's what these kinds of speakers do. Uh, 
The veneer came from a company called GL Veneer. It is a walnut uh, with essentially just a clear poly coat on it in semi-gloss. Uh, GL Veneer uh, sells essentially engineered uh, veneers. So they go through a press. They are embossed in the grain pattern of the wood. Uh, so they're sustainable in that sense and they're economical. They're not too darn expensive. They can be paperbacked and anybody with a little bit of skill can get pretty good results. Uh, what we did here is instead of, uh, normally you would edge band this, which this is edge banded, and then you would stain it the same color. So like the walnut, it'd be walnut, walnut. We went black on black so that when you put the grill in, it has a slight uh, contrast. So if I can show you guys, the whole point was black textured grill uh, veneer. So to give it a more, to give a more stunning visual presentation, not to have everything so homogenous. Anyway, I hope you guys like, hope you watched the first video and kind of understood why I chose the parts I did. Have a great evening.